Okay, this lecture is about trans ugh, transcription, which is basically the first step in gene expression, where we copy a gene sequence from DNA and copy it into RNA. So you're going to notice a lot of similarities with replication in the sense that we make RNA anti-parallel to one strand of DNA, and it follows base pairing rules. The main thing to remember, <clears throat> excuse me, is that RNA uses uracil instead of thymine. So as you're base pairing, a, a base in DNA will pair with U in RNA. But everything else is the same. T in DNA pairs with A in RNA. G and C base pairs are just the same. So you have to make your brain focus, and whenever you want to put a T in RNA, you put a U. <clears throat> so the central dogma of molecular biology or of gene expression is this pathway um, to expressing what we ultimately want in the cell is a polypeptide or a protein. So you start with DNA, your genetic material, and through the process of transcription, you copy a little piece of that DNA from your chromosomes into something called messenger RNA. So again, you're going to see use in the sequence because it's mRNA. The following video will talk about the last step, which is called translation, where we actually take this RNA information and translate it into a different language, the language of proteins and amino acids. So we'll get there in a minute. But this is how genetic information in general flows so that we can make proteins. So a couple things you need to recognize is that you're going to have a long strand, well, you're not going to have a long strand of DNA necessarily in your um, assignments, but your chromosomes are long strands of DNA, and only parts of it are copied. And so the start of transcription is called the promoter, And I abbreviate, abbreviate transcription, TRXN. Okay. And this is where we start copying DNA to RNA. And at the end, there will be a sequence called a terminator. And terminator is the end of transcription, so it's where you stop copying the RNA. And I want you just to see that, yes, there would be DNA sequence after it, because the gene is just a small part um, of the DNA uh, chromosome. In between, we call this the transcribed region or, or the RNA coding region, and that's just between the start and the stop. Now if you get into maybe genetics or molecular biology, you learn about these regulatory sequences. So every gene is not expressed all the time in a cell. So we have regulations that allow certain genes to be turned on at certain times, um, some genes never turned on. So we're not going to focus on regulatory sequences here. I just want you to understand the basic mechanism of transcription, but just understand um, that there are ways that we control which genes get expressed. 
So just one more illustration of the difference between a gene versus your chromosome. So a gene codes for a protein. Okay. You have about 22,000 genes in your DNA um, dispersed amongst all your different chromosomes. And we'll talk more about chromosomes in Unit 4 when we talk about cell division and genetics. So this illustration is just trying to bring home the, the message that genes are just small regions on a chromosome and they encode for a protein, something that's going to have a function in your cell. Okay. So again, just to show you a little more detail, as you'll see this figure later, we have a promoter, we have what we will call a terminator, and um, in a little while we'll talk about these different parts of the RNA molecule that get processed. Okay, But the important part is promoter is the start of transcription. Again, we represent that as um, a bent arrow, kind of pointing in the direction of transcription. So the enzyme that does transcription is called RNA polymerase. So we had DNA polymerase that makes DNA, we have RNA polymerase that makes strands of RNA. And RNA polymerase has its own helicase activity. So RNA polymerase can actually open up and unwind the DNA to make a single-stranded template. Okay. Because you can't copy double-stranded DNA because it's all base paired. So you have to open it up and only one strand is copied for one gene. So what you need to figure out is which strand is copied. Okay. So we call this coding versus template strand. Um, sometimes we call this the non-template strand. Some books use sense and anti-sense. I don't use those terms um, for transcription. So what's going to happen in transcription is the double strand of DNA is opened by RNA polymerase and one strand is copied. Okay. And the strand that is copied is called the template strand. So just think, you use a template to help you maybe draw something or copy something. So the template strand is the one that's copied. And what I want you to see from this figure is that this RNA, messenger RNA, would base pair with this bottom template strand. That's how it's copied, base pairing. So there's a T here and there's an A here. And there's a G here and a C, and an A in DNA and a U in um, the RNA. Okay. So we're only copying one strand. I also want you to know that RNA is always made five prime to three prime, just like DNA. So the five prime is where the promoter is. Promoter is actually not copied, but that's the area, and the three prime is where the terminator. And yes, it's anti-parallel to the DNA strand, just like <clears throat> we did in DNA replication. 
So here's just another um, image to help you see that template strand is the one copied. So you've got your base pairing going on. And I'm just drawing lines, but it's the same. Um, two hydrogen bonds and three hydrogen bonds. I'm not doing a very good job drawing. And the direction of synthesis is five prime to three prime. So RNA polymerase always adds nucleotides to the three prime end. RNA polymerase, like we talked about primase, can just start anywhere. So as soon as RNA polymerase hits the promoter, it can start copying. It doesn't need that, that three prime hydroxyl like DNA polymerase. So there are three stages of transcription, initiation, elongation, and termination. Initiation means, whoa, RNA polymerase binds the promoter. That's where it initiates. Elongation is the act of copying. And termination is the end. So we again are not going into lots of details. You can learn that in um, genetics or molecular biology. I want you to understand the mechanism. So I want you to look at elongation again and just see that what's happening is the RNA polymerase is binding to RNA nucleotides floating around in the nucleus, so transcription happens in the nucleus, and as it's unwinding the DNA, it's adding nucleotides one by one. As it leaves the DNA, the DNA rewinds. So we're not doing anything to our DNA. Our DNA is our stable genetic material, right? I like to think of it like a cookbook, right? That's where all the recipes are. Transcription would be you copying one of the recipes down and taking it, say, to your friend's house to cook dinner. Okay? You don't want to mess with that original cookbook. Okay, Say it's grandma's cookbook and it's got all your favorite recipes. You don't want to mess with that. So we leave the DNA and we make a copy of RNA, and then we can take that. And so that way, if you're over at your friend's house and their dog eats your recipe, you still have the genetic information stored back home. You still have the cookbook back home. So the cells do this same thing. They make an RNA copy of a gene so that it can go and be translated into a protein. But we don't want to mess with the DNA. And if we make a mistake in the RNA, or if something happens in the um, cytoplasm and the RNA gets chewed up, that's okay because we have that original information stored in the nucleus in our DNA. Okay, I don't want you to get overwhelmed by this figure, um, but I just want to let you know that termination is actually pretty complicated and pretty interesting. So what we're going to talk about, um, I'm just peeking at my slides, we're going to talk about after we do a couple of questions, is we're going to talk about RNA processing. And so what happens with um, messenger RNA is that it's going to get a cap put on it to protect the five prime end. You're going to keep doing transcription and then eventually it's going to get a poly A tail put on it. And a lot of books um, kind of write this in a sequential fashion and I just am showing you this to let you know that this actually happens co-transcriptionally. So RNA processing happens co-transcriptionally. So 
in termination, what happens is the RNA polymerase actually keeps on going, and when this <coughs> terminator sequence is read in the RNA, an enzyme comes and cleaves the RNA and actually chomps like little Pac-Man up and knocks the polymerase off. So at termination, the way there's not a nice little signal that says, RNA polymerase, it's time for you to stop. It's actually due to <clears throat> another um, enzyme coming and seeing a non-capped RNA molecule and chomping it and knocking it off. I think that's kind of cool. More information than you really need, but um, kind of fascinating stuff for transcription, how it works. So what you need to know is that transcription happens between the promoter and the terminator. But this is the mechanism of how it works. All right, the last concept I want to talk about um, as far as how transcription works is I want you to understand that either strand of DNA can be used to copy a gene sequence. For each gene, you only copy one strand. But I don't want you to think that the other strand of DNA just sits there. There can be genes on that strand as well. And that's all this is trying to show you, is that in this case, <clears throat> for gene A and gene B, the bottom strand is the template strand. And for gene C, it's the top strand, right? Because I might give you a top strand is a template strand, or a bottom strand as a template strand. So I don't want you to get in this habit of going, oh, it's always the top strand, or oh, it's always the bottom strand that we're copying. Okay, it can be either one. And notice that everything is still, oops, anti, oops, all right, you don't want to draw now, anti-parallel, right? If you're copying the template strand, you copy 5 prime to 3 prime anti-parallel, or, or you, I should say you make the RNA 5 prime to 3 prime anti-parallel. If you're copying the bottom, you make the RNA 5 prime to 3 prime anti-parallel. All right, so let's see if you've gotten some of these concepts. So feel free to pause. So RNA is transcribed anti-parallel to the DNA strand. That is correct, because the template strand is the one it's copying, base pairing with. Given the transcription information below, which DNA strand is the template strand? To solve this, you want to look for base pairing. So if this is your RNA, which strand does it base pair with? Okay, and in this case, it's DNA 2. Okay, you can see here the base pairing. Okay, now well, I want you to figure out the RNA sequence, 5 prime to 3 prime, based on the DNA template. So I've shown you the DNA. Now I want you to transcribe it and figure out the sequence. So the first thing you can always do is eliminate anything with T's. There's no T's in RNA. Okay. And we're going to copy 5 prime to 3 prime. So we're going to have an A, a U, a G, a C, a U, an A. And let's see if we can figure this out. A, U, G, C, U, A. So the answer is C. Okay. Has to be anti parallel, and now you know that sometimes you have to flip things to figure out the right answer. Okay. This one is not right, even though it follows base pairing, because it's the wrong orientation. 
or direction. Okay, so let's talk about RNA processing. So you have a long region of RNA that's transcribed. This is only happening in eukaryotes, not in prokaryotes. And three things happen. The mRNA gets a cap. It gets certain regions removed, spliced out, and it gets a tail on the three prime end. So we have a five prime cap, the introns are removed, and a poly A tail put on the three prime end. Just kind of peeking up my next slide. Okay. So the image I showed you before, I just wanted to illustrate that all of this is happening co translationally. You get your cap you get your tail, and I didn't show you, but you also get the introns spliced out. So introns are just genetic information that we don't need for the protein. Exons code for the protein. And the way they were named is that the exons are actually going to exit out of the nucleus in that mRNA, so that's why they're called exons. The introns stay in, and when they're removed, say intron 1 and intron 2, then they're just split, hydrolysis reactions are happening back to individual nucleotides that can be reused. Okay, so what's important to remember is you've got three processing, cap, splicing, and tailing. This is one of my favorite images because it shows you the comparison between the DNA and the RNA. So here in black is the DNA that encodes for a gene. So right here you have your promoter and here you have your terminator But the mature mRNA, after all of its splicing and capping and tailing, is only shown in blue. That means this and this and this and all of these loops, these are all introns that are removed. And so this shows you <laughs> for a gene that has 7,700 base pairs of DNA, once everything happens, the final RNA sequence only has a little over a thousand. Seems like a waste, but it's how we've evolved all of these different proteins. The term I want you to know about the complex this is a protein RNA complex. It's called the spliceosome, and its job is to remove introns. And we won't go through the molecular details of how it happens, but it basically brings together the two ends of the exon and splices out the intron. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, so this is just showing a little summary of what we've talked about. Right? So we talked about you have a promoter, and you have a terminator region, and you're going to make RNA that has exons and introns. Those introns will get removed. A five prime cap and a three prime tail will come on. Don't worry about all this other stuff, that will be in the translation lecture. Now, if you're still thinking, it really seems like a waste to get rid of all those introns, I want you to know that they're not always gone, and, and this is an important concept. Alternative splicing means sometimes we keep all of the exons together, one, two, oh, no, none of these have them all. <laughs> a lot of the exons together, 
but we can splice, the spliceosome can splice different exons together. They always have to stay in order, but you can make multiple proteins from one gene. So one gene can encode for multiple proteins. And that's the concept of alternative splicing that we can use, put different exons together, different combinations, and that will give us different mRNAs that will eventually give us different proteins. All right, so try these questions. So the arrow, the type of DNA sequence that's at the start is called a promoter. Okay. But the protein that binds the promoter is called RNA polymerase. Okay. So this is transcription initiation. Okay, which process shows transcription? And the answer is process one. So this is transcription. This is RNA processing, because now you're removing the introns and putting on the cap and tail. And this last one is translation. Okay. Given the picture below, where should RNA polymerase be to continue transcription? So hopefully you're looking at the orientation of the RNA molecule, and you notice it goes five prime to three prime. So RNA polymerase is gonna be right here so that it can continue transcribing that RNA. So the answer is eight. All right, so that is transcription. These are your outcomes, so we've talked about the central dogma of gene expression. We've talked about why you make RNA copies, because you don't want to mess with your genetic information. You don't want anything to happen to that. We've talked about a promoter, where transcription starts, the RNA coding region, where elongation happens, and the terminator, where transcription stops. We will practice this in class and on worksheets. You've got to be able to identify the template and the non-template or the coding strand. The template is the one copied. And just remember, it's copied by base pairing. So always look for what uh, sequences base pair. Be able to tr transcribe double-stranded DNA into RNA. We will work on that in class, and there are worksheets posted. Be able to determine the polarities, right? So I want you to be able to figure out the five prime and three prime, given a DNA or given an RNA sequence. The three steps of transcription we kind of talked about here with the components. The enzyme used is RNA polymerase. We've talked about splicing, capping, and tailing. So these are co-transcriptional modifications. It's also called RNA processing. Know how the spliceosome works in general. <coughs> Basically, what I want you to understand is it brings <coughs> exons together. And then the final concept of alternative splicing that you can make multiple proteins or polypeptides from a single gene by using some or all um, of the different exons. Okay, I hope that helps, works on some worksheets, and we'll practice this in class.